and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Tiff Stevenson and Josh Widdicombe, Ramesh Ranganathan, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Tiff, which category would you like? Uh, I'll go for home news. OK, your category is home news. The answer is 339 miles. What is the question? Is it how far the proclaimers got before they went, nah, she's not worth it? <laughs> <laughs> if Scotland votes yes to independence, how high should they build the new Hadrian's Wall? <laughs> <laughs> is it what distance from a roundabout is too soon to slow down? <laughs> <laughs> is it what distance is the nearest that the HS2 route goes to David Cameron's house? <laughs> <laughs> is it if you turn on Grinder in Russia, where is your closest match? <laughs> <laughs> What's the distance between <laughs> Bjork and reality? <laughs> How long can a lorry driver go without needing a shit? <laughs> that's, an average, that's an average. And that's not, that's not just a start. <laughs> like, he's, he's not like a microwave oven. Doesn't go ding. <laughs> <laughs> Is he's... it um, how far you have to walk to complete a full circuit of IKEA? <laughs> <laughs> Is it if you travel 340 miles by megabus, for how long are you regretting that decision? <laughs> I run a very good bus company. I wouldn't hear a word. <laughs> is it how much closer has the Islamic caliphate got in the last five minutes? <laughs> that was satirical. But yeah. It simply didn't work. Because the reason it didn't work is because you're sitting next to somebody who looks so much like it could be a Muslim. People are nervous. <laughs> you are not sure. I, sh I, sh I should have. I should have laughed. Then you guys would have been all I right. <laughs> Is the answer, um, how far did the Tour de France go through Britain this week? Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Josh. We were very well. <laughs> yes. The question I was looking for was, what's the total distance of the three British stages of this year's Tour de France, which began in Yorkshire at the weekend? Did you watch it? Did you watch it? Did you watch it? Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it coming through London. I, I thought that was a, you know, to show British cycling its best, they should probably have, when they got to central London, had to get a Boris bike. <laughs> It's a bit strange, isn't it, that they've now gone to France. So the fourth stage is in France, and they've gone to France, and they've gone by train or ferry. When the obvious answer is send them across the channel on a pedalo. <laughs> 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 yeah. like... It's exciting. Cause it, was, it was in Yorkshire, but it wasn't, still wasn't very Yorkshire. There was part of me that was hoping on the final descent they'd be overtaken by the guy from Last of the Summer Wine in a bath. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing the Hovis music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very happy Yorkshire, wasn't it? I mean, that's something a lot of people's traditional view of Yorkshire, you know, that they would have all sat and watched it go past and then go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A nice okay. clash of cultures, though, isn't it? I like the idea of Yorkshire people with French people and we're hoping for, like, a big romance to bloom where I've got a Yorkshire woman chatting up a French cyclist. Hey, up, love, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Pet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was wasn't it? It was, it was York down to Sheffield, yep. then it was bus to Cambridge, then yep. cycled to London. A very familiar journey if you've ever tried to catch a train on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about it is they've sort of given French names to stuff, but then you still have, like, Yorkshire bits in. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've got, like, the butter tubs pass has become good de butter tubs. Like, <laughs> it's, it's quality. It's like, it's like when, when you hear, like, when I hear my family sort of speaking in their mother tongue, you sort of, we, we, we talk, and then you have to throw in an English word, like, Enla madri, upadi macha, nalla, nalla, enakavanga, King's Cross St Pancras. You think, you know, they did change all the names into French to get publicity, so all the pubs changed the names, didn't they? Yeah. All yes. the pubs throughout Yorkshire changed their names, and you just, into French. And you think, how cross was the manager of Pret-a-Manger in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see one of the pubs that changed its name was called the Yew Tree. Now, yeah. 
I think they should consider a name change anyway in that yes. pub. <laughs> I mean, it's a very... It's been a huge topic, but I wouldn't have teamed a pub around it. <laughs> 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 it's, it's it's amazing. Amazing. I mean, Planet Hollywood was an unpleasant visit at the best of times, but the U Tree is it genuine. What family fun at the U Tree? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I just like the fact that you got to see somebody on a bike with a drug problem who hadn't just stolen my mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the BBC coverage on that first day, though, they described... They said, oh, there's 2.5 million people out yeah. in Yorkshire, and they described in many areas that the crowds were dense. Now, I... <laughs> I thought that was unnecessary and somewhat regionless myself. <laughs> Well, I, I watched the coverage of it coming into, into London, and although, you know, it, it, it stopped being in Yorkshire, but the commentator was incredibly Yorkshire, because he went, when they, they were commentating and looking at the different places in London they could see, and the bloke went, where's the shard? The shard was finished uh, just in time for the uh, Olympic Games. You can go right to the top of the shard. It's very expensive in my... <laughs> <laughs> If you watch, if you're uh, an avid fan of the Tour de France, as I am, the, you, they, as, as they go on, there's always a helicopter shot to break up the, just the shots of the cyclists of whatever local chateaus there are, like mm. whatever, which they sort of did a version of. But there's one shot of Trafalgar Square and the camera do, of the helicopter slowly rotating around Nelson's column. And you're going, I would like to hear the French commentary. <laughs> Nobody knows who this man is. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, what, by the way, endangered the safety of riders during the, the stages? This here? was people taking selfies and they, they basically, obviously, they sort of would have their back <laughs> to the peloton <laughs> and so they couldn't actually see them coming. And it, you think it's just a new form of natural selection, basically, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't there a lad who got a selfie with the Queen? Yes, and Be Be Queen visited Belfast a couple of weeks ago, and uh, yeah, and it was relatively, he did it really smoothly. I mean, you'd hardly spot it happening. Here's a picture of it here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> the picture you want is what that guy behind him <laughs> is about to do now. <laughs> Belfast isn't the place to suddenly jump out at a member of the Royals, though, is it? That's a very, <laughs> that's a very brave move. <laughs> other news. Uh, <laughs> what medical problem has David Cameron warned the world about this week? Posh twat syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, superbugs that are resistant to the current crop of antibiotics, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Resistant in, in a proper medical sense of the, yeah. rather than resistant to kind of a... Oh, I'm not fond of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the reason bacteria have got so much worse is that all the good bacteria have been put into yoghurt. <laughs> <laughs> He said it's going to send medicine back to the Dark Ages. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to go to the doctor. If I, if, I, if I turn up with athlete's foot and end up getting burnt as a witch, I'm not getting involved. <laughs> I mean, it'd be your only choice. I mean, the guy who farms leeches is going, well, well, well. <laughs> Oh, back. you've all come crawling back now, <laughs> haven't you, with your infections I mean, and whatnot? Yeah. He has had probably quite a bad few years, the guy that farms leeches, though. <laughs> it's just been a rough 300 years <laughs> or so <laughs> since the madness of George the Parrot. <laughs> that, you know, it, but since, you know, he's, he's still waiting with his... Just stroking the leeches. Oh, yes. <laughs> They shall come back to us. <laughs> no, I don't let the leech sit on my arm. The leech is stuck to my arm. I can't get the leech off my arm. <laughs> the thing that worries me about going back to the Dark Ages is, uh, if you go back to the Middle Ages with, with mental, the thing that really worries me is keyhole surgery. Have you, have you seen the size of a medieval <laughs> keyhole? It, the thing is, I think everybody's known this, haven't they? Like, that doctors yes. prescribe antibiotics, like, too much. Like, every time you go to the doctor, like, I've got... I feel flu antibiotics. My leg hurts. <laughs> My leg hurts, antibiotics. I think that I'm developing a bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics. Antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I'd done that impression, it would have got a lot yeah. different reaction. <laughs> it it would have been fine, cos it would have gone... <laughs> 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 you have the power of life or death, <laughs> whether you do that. I can end any of you. <laughs> <laughs>
there was. You, you're right, though, in... I'm not, I'm not now sucking up to you. Uh, there, there, he's right, there, he said, this is not a new thing. The timing of Cameron getting on board does feel a bit like he did a... Pre I've got a press conference and all hands shoot up and goes, what about Coulson, what about Coulson, what about Coulson? And Cameron went, Coulson, people are dying, people are dying. <laughs> He brought it up, didn't he? He said he brought up uh, antibiotic-resistant superbugs at the last G7 meeting, and apparently Vladimir Putin was very interested in buying some. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, how has the scientist in America been putting the world at risk? Oh, now, oh. He's kind of mutated a strain of bird flu, hasn't he? Yes, he has, yes. To make it... Um, it's transmissible now between bird and human. It, it's a thing we've tried to avoid. No, it's not. It's not transmissible between bird and human. It is. Yeah. It's transmissible between duck and ferret. Nice. No. Uh, <laughs> It's a perfect yorkshire. Well, it is, yeah. It's, well, it's, I'm concerned this man has never seen a zombie film, because this is how they all start. They all begin with this. Yeah. They all begin with yeah. this, Didn't they with... compare it to a film, though? Are they con con contagion? contagion. It, actually, it was in one of the papers, and, they, and an example, they, they give two historical examples. Historical examples of, of a viral infection. There was Spanish flu, which killed 57 million, and the film Contagion, in which 26 million people died. And you're going, no, the film <laughs> Contagion, nobody actually died. That didn't happen. Mm. That was all fictional. <laughs> You, you might as well say it uses a laser similar to the one used in the Death Star, which blew up the planet <laughs> all the way. If they wanted to compare it to a film that brought suffering to millions, they should have compared it to that one about Princess Monaco of Kent. Uh, Princess no, is that Monaco. her name? Yeah. Princess Monaco. I don't know her fucking her name. name. I just know it was a terrible Prince film. Princess Grace I'm never talking of again. Monaco. Prince <laughs> Princess Monaco of Kent. Yes. <laughs> Your, your wife is, works in medicine, doesn't she? she? Does, she's yeah, a she's doctor. A doctor yeah. Do you reckon this is true? Do you reckon you can tell what someone's going to be like in bed depending on which area of medicine they work in, right? Because you've got, like, the uh, paramedics. <laughs> this could end badly. You've got the paramedics, they like a quick in and out, and then you've got the GPs, they cover a lot of the body, but they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, and then you've got the surgeons who like to go and have a rummage around then leave something behind that shouldn't be there. <laughs> Often, if you, if you sleep with a GP and you go, well, is there any chance we could do something special? I said, no, I will have to refer you to a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to a <consultant> <laughs> <laughs> I'll be ending that round. The boys going to run with you and Gary! <laughs> now we play a round called Tour de Fa ha 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 hans <laughs> This game involves <laughs> Tiff and Gary, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is dating. OK, I'll, I'll take that. OK, Tiff. I'm pretty glad I'm not single anymore, cos I'm 36, so I'm at that age where I've had to start saying to guys, seriously, do you mind not talking to my face? They're right here. <laughs> Actually, more like here now. Um, I'm not saying guys don't approach me anymore in bars, they do, but it is to get around me. Um, <laughs> I had a guy come up to me recently in a nightclub and he went, Excuse me, and I went, Yes. And he went, No, just excuse me. Um, <laughs> So, uh, I don't really understand, though, the, the whole objectification of women, like, until I missed it, right? But uh, I always, you know, I, I don't think I've missed sexism, but that's what getting older does. Because uh, I was always confused by hearing guys talk about women in bars, you know, and objectifying them, going, are you a boobs guy or are you a bum guy? Are you a boobs guy or are you a bum guy? And as a woman, that's really offensive, right? Because women, we don't sit around going, are you a balls girl or are you a penis girl? <laughs> Are you a balls girl or are you a penis girl? And I'll tell you why that is. That is because no woman in the history of the world has ever said, do you know what? I'm just a balls girl, me. <laughs> <laughs> just really love a pair of balls. I just love a pair of balls. I like how they're dry and clammy at the same time. <laughs> Wrinkly but weirdly smooth. <laughs> Red and brown. And I like moving them around in my hand like they're Chinese meditation balls. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Gary. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And uh, the topic is health. 
The doctor told me to lose some weight. I said, how? He said, don't eat anything fatty. I said, what, pies, chips, that kind of thing? He said, no, just don't eat anything fatty. <laughs> I was thrown out of Weight Watchers for making sarcastic comments during the weekly weigh-in. As you can imagine, I accepted the decision with huge grace, cos they threw her out as well. <laughs> Chair of Dyslexic Society was recently given an OBE. He said, what's the point? I can't play the bloody thing. <laughs> I live next door to a family of anorexic agoraphobics. Yeah, but they've got a few skeletons in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine's been suffering from paranoid delusions and now he thinks he's a chocolate orange. <laughs> I worry he's going to be sectioned. <laughs> Poor Terry. <laughs> I thought PPI was just something you could get if you didn't wear goggles at a swimming baths. <laughs> I bought an alcoholic ginger beer. He wasn't pleased. <laughs> I once met a girl who confused the tube of KY jelly with superglue. I asked how it happened, but sadly her lips were sealed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Well done to both of you. Point there for Tiffany Simmerton. Come back to Dan. Good work. Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? Is this when they got the news Cliff Richard had been caught in traffic? <laughs> <laughs> Are they, in fact, watching Prince Philip trying to talk to the Williams sisters? <laughs> <laughs> is it, um, news in from the palace, the Queen is dead? <laughs> Like to get their news from oh god, I had not that story appear during the week. Yeah. You think it would have got more coverage than a passing reference on Mock the Week? Yeah. <laughs> have they uh, have they just seen themselves on the giant screen? <laughs> <laughs> have Kate and Will's hired private detectives to spy on each other? <laughs> have they just found out that the royal premiere of Mrs. Brown's Boys has been cancelled? <laughs> I think I know what it is. They have just witnessed Princess Monaco of Kent. <laughs> 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 finally, finally, she's a It's a new thing where they, um, they do, like, public executions of illegal immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> do you laugh? Re I mean, do you laugh, Rom? Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah. I found that good. That was OK. <laughs> Hey, you know what it actually is? I think they're at Wimbledon, aren't they? Yes, they are at Wimbledon. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Of course, they're at Wimbledon. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. This is a picture of Prince William and Kate Middleton cheering on Roger Federer before he was defeated by Novak Djokovic in the men's Wimbledon final. Seven-time champion Federer lost in five sets to Djokovic in a gripping match that lasted nearly four hours. He won, he ate the grass, or... As some people were saying, he lost his balance and hit the court with his teeth. That was... <laughs> <laughs> he said the grass was the best meal he'd ever had. Which, I mean, I've not tried Serbian food, but it must be. <laughs> also, if he ever wins on clay, it's going to be an absolute horror show, isn't it? <laughs> is, is that what they mean when they say a tennis player's seeded? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's getting ready to get seeded right now. <laughs> It's pretty, it's pretty dangerous. With Boris Becker there and the crowd shouting, Roger, Roger, it's kind of dangerous. <laughs> He's going to take that as an instruction and start looking for a waitress, isn't it? He's What's the crowd looking there? now, isn't he? Becker, he looks like he's having a permanent allergic reaction to a bee sting. Yeah. <laughs> it's being sort of like a boiled ham in a wig. He's... <laughs> <laughs> It was lucky they finished when they did, cos, I mean, the smell of burning in the players' <laughs> box. People go, we've got to get Boris out of the sunshine, either that or brush him with a bit of egg. We've, <laughs> we've got to do something. 
I like how how after he won, he dedicated the uh, prize to his future wife and future baby, and all the audience went, "Ah, oh, that's so sweet." Apart from his current wife and current baby. Yeah. <laughs> it was obviously sad that Murray got knocked out in the quarterfinal. He was effing and blinding, wasn't he? You know, five minutes before the bloody game, and people were saying they were shocked by him. But let's face it, a Scotsman walking around talking to themselves, shouting expletives to nobody in particular. <laughs> It's not really that much of a shock, is it? <laughs> it is With Murray, there's always that thing, there's always that uh, sort of age-old uh, age joke where when he's winning he's British and when he's losing he's Scottish. And this time he got battered, and you can't get more Scottish than that. Andy Murray, big fan of the show. OK. <laughs> uh, what was special with the women's final this year? It was short. It was yeah. brought quite Weird, brief. Because it? it's normally the men that are quicker. Hello! <laughs> Hello! That just happened. <laughs> There was Eugenie Bouchard. Eugenie Bouchard. Yeah, she, yeah. she made it into the final, and she's named after the royal family, her and her twin sister Beatrice, yes, which is why now she spends her entire life flying around the world, earning large amounts of money for just doing a few hours' work each week. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be actual members of the royal family, though, which is why she doesn't have a brother called Harry. Yeah. Or an anti called Monaco of Kent. Uh... <laughs> is, this, is this episode going to end up with all of us hung for treason? <laughs> or or me carried through the streets of Dublin. <laughs> In other news, what did French police recently lose at Marseille Airport? A giant Toblerone. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. They did, um, they were doing a security test, weren't they, where they got sniffer dogs to find explosives, Semtex, that they had hidden, and the dogs couldn't find the explosives, and then the policemen who'd, who'd hidden the explosives couldn't remember where they'd hidden them. <laughs> if, 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 a, if a sniffer dog can't sniff out the bomb, then that's just a dog. That is a tough thing to turn into a dog. And, and, like, take the badge off a dog. You're just, <laughs> you're just demoted to a dog. <laughs> you're off the yeah. This explosive they lost, I gather it was called C4. C4, yeah. Which presumably means they got another chance to find it again an hour later on C4 plus one. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect the problem, honestly, with the sniffer dog was that it had been sniffing drugs all afternoon. Couldn't remember what explosive smelt like. Yeah. I'm supposed to be looking for some C4, man, but I am <laughs> off my tits, bruv, I tell you. This has <laughs> been the best day ever. Mm, do, do, do you want a screenplay? Yeah, it's, it's about a dog. It's about a dog who's a sniffer dog uh, and uh, has lots of adventures. <laughs> oh, it's really good. I mean, I've worked on it for a long time, actually. Yeah, it's like amazing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> We should, do, we should do this more, we should do this more! This is great! Ah! <laughs> Apparently that's what it's like. Uh... <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Josh, Tiff and Andy! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear at the dentist. I think you may have to wear braces. It's just that you're very fat and your trousers keep falling down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a bit surprised at all. When I said uh, spit it out, I wasn't expecting you to say you were shagging my wife. <laughs> Hello, uh, is that Mr Chang? We need to change your appointment. No, we can do 2.15 or 2.45. <laughs> Welcome to Dick Van Dyke, the dentist. I'm afraid it's worse than bad breath. You've got supercalifragilistic extreme halitosis. <laughs> I wouldn't say that your root canal is in a bad way, but I've just found a shopping trolley in it. <laughs> do you want a lollipop for being such a brave boy? Of course you do. That's why your teeth look like cheesy what's it, you little prick. <laughs> and now, if you inhale the gas and try and guess what I had for breakfast. <laughs> He 
Yep, you're right. They are false. Had a good feel while she was unconscious. <laughs> No, don't worry. That's not the sound of the drill. It's just that my receptionist's a scouser. <laughs> <laughs> Your dental hygienist will see you soon. She's just going for a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Upper right six. Lower left seven. Sorry, I'll be with you as soon as I finish this game of battleships. <laughs> think of a celebrity whose veneers I'd like to copy? Um, probably Princess Monaco of Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I want a crown? Well, I'm Princess Monaco of Kent. <laughs> <laughs> this is most unusual, madam. You don't seem to have any teeth at all. What's that? You're here for a smear test? That's next door. <laughs> Jumping is. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is <laughs> on likely lines from a children's book. And Sleeping Beauty slept for a hundred nights. In fairness, it had been a massive bender. <laughs> Black beauty, she said. I'm glad I bought you rather than the rampant rabbit. <laughs> the dragon looked at him scarily. Little Hobbit stepped up to him and said, Hello, I'm Josh Weddercom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the laugh. I'm not doing the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> What big eyes you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. Yes, said Grandma, I'm off my tits on methamphetamine. <laughs> you do not like green eggs and ham? Well, tough, this is a Weatherspoons. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Toad, Ratty and Badger all went on an adventure in the motor car. Then Mr Toad accidentally said something racist on camera and was on his final warning from the BBC. <laughs> I bet you wish you were like me. I fall over all the time and I never hurt myself, said Mr Bounce. Oh, fuck off, said Mark Cavendish. <laughs> <laughs> And behind the jumpers and the coats at the back of the wardrobe, there he was, Julian Assange. <laughs> <laughs> I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow you for five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, what should we call our baby, said Mr Dizzy. Ooh, let's think, said Miss Rascal. <laughs> Spot wondered why he'd been placed into the sack with the brick. But either way, this was going to be the best trip to the canal ever. <laughs> <laughs> the fat controller went on a business strategy course. And from then on, he wanted to be known as the horizontally gifted chief operations manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cinderella, she said, I'm your fairy princess. Princess Monaco of Kent. <laughs> Charlie couldn't believe he was being allowed into the chocolate factory. His girlfriend had been dead against it for years. It was maybe because Mr Tickle could reach around doorways and through windows that he came to the attention of Operation U-Tree. <laughs> and then you just have to try and pay your mortgage off before you die. Good night, son. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to rubbish you and Gary.
And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Chip Stevenson and Josh Whittacombe. <laughs> Commiserations to Roma Shranganathan, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darabreen. Good night.